still do that. Yeah. And, and Joint Commission is more and more so uh, very progressively, I believe, re uh, requiring biomed to be at the table or clinical engineering to be at the table. That's true. It's not just that we have a, uh, a completed a certain percentage of PMs successfully or that we have an accurate inventory of our scopes in our, you know, in the right. OR. Now it's, uh, it's, it's uh, expected that we are involved in the uh, process of any new acquisition of medical technology. The, now what that involvement means right. could be a signature on a piece of paper to being at that table and, and helping the clinicians utilize the technology safely, effectively, and ultimately give good patient care. I think those That's are an excellent point. Stream. The EMB as well does that. Does it? I, I was going to... Yeah, that, that whole process of managing the entire life cycle, you're absolutely right. That's, that's something that uh, George Mills has emphasized several times in his presentations. That's another great resource that's on the Amy website. Ask George. There's an e-forum. For the, um, anybody can join. And uh, if you have those sort of questions like, what would the impact, what would Joint Commission think about such and such? You can pose those questions, um, and, and the Joint Commission will answer them. George Mills uh, will answer those. It's great. It's a weekly thing, and as a matter of fact, uh, uh, some of us on the board look at that very regularly, and, and I think we've even published some of those in our newsletters. But it's a weekly thing, and Amy's got all sorts of forms you can belong to. Ask the questions, and nobody's out there to beat you up. But, you know, right. you ask this Ask George question, George Mills is not going to tell a surveyor to do an unexpected survey of your facility. Right, right, yes. That's a very good point, very good point. And the, um, the CEIT community website has some similar forums. I have not been as diligent as I need to be um, with monitoring those, but they have very similar sort of forums going there that's obviously focused on this IT-CE convergence. Questions seem to change every day, so. Have you visited the Petroglyphs down in southern Utah? <laughs> I see you like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, yeah, the, um, the, these pictures are actually from my uh, our trip to uh, Southern Colorado. We went up through a uh, went up through Monument Valley. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't seen as much as I'd like to yet. I have a pretty long bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boise um, or uh, the other folks that are on the line. Do you have uh -oh. any questions? We just lost our audio. Did we? Did I do that? I don't know. Oh, it's back okay. I think. I won't touch it. Mask, mask it again. <laughs> You're going to have to watch my vacation pictures, people. Sorry. Boise? <laughs> do you guys, uh, Boise or others, do you have any questions? Okay, just so everybody can hear the question, um, interfaces today are very specific, very expensive, um, very device specific, and do we see it becoming less specific, less expensive, um, less complicated? Um, <clears throat> maybe, hopefully. Um, as I mentioned, today there are no standards, and there's not, if you will, an imperative for there to be standards. Um, the FDA doesn't require it. And, there's not a push. What my team and I actually have been um, talking to Health System, when we do an engagement, we actually work with them to create contract language so that when they buy devices, there's language in there asking them, well, expecting the, the device manufacturer to participate in this standards development so that down the road, if I, and we'll use a simple example that drives people's nuts, pulse oximeters. You know, there, it might know core today or mass mode tomorrow or known in the day after or whatnot. All of them have their own interface specifics. And even within one manufacturer, the, the networking specifics are different. So the interface, you might have to build a, uh, an interface for every make and model. Not just every make, but every model within a make. Okay? What we would like to see and what I think you guys would like to see is that there's a standard for pulse oximeters. So that when it doesn't matter, 
if I buy Nonan or Massimo or Nelco or whomever's on the market next week. That it is much closer, if not plug and play. Now this is to the, the manufacturer's community's advantage as well, because today for conversions, it becomes, you know what, I just paid for all the interfaces, and I hate converting sensors too, and you're going to make me convert both of those? Forget it. I'm sticking with who I got. Okay. Down the road, it potentially works to the manufacturer's advantages as well. It's not here today. It's going to be driven by us as consumers of technology. Kind of like Dicom is for imaging. Yes, exactly like Dicom is for imaging. Yeah. yeah. Would you buy an ultrasound unit or or a cath lab or whatever, anything? Would you buy imaging equipment that wasn't didn't have some sort of a Dicom statement? No. And there are standards out there that have been up for several years for cardiology, for example. So that if you uh, have an ambulance service that has a different uh, monitor or DFib than what would typically have integrated in the past with your monitors in your hospital, you can now take that person from the time that they were monitored to maybe their the ICU stay that you know, they may unfortunately have to do uh, in the course of their care. Uh, a good resource for this, and if you want to get involved in that or find out where it's at, is the IHE, and that's Integrating the Healthcare Enterprise. Right, and that's one of the, on one of these slides, there's a, a web link there.